We speak in stanzas wishing our reality was rhyme and meter when in reality we live in line breaks. Years of enjambment and no closure. Sometimes I want to call you and tell you come over and sing your Zion songs to me. But then I remember that we are an allegory for romance. You see, we left things up to time and chance, making our love like poetry, just the theory. My given name is Nigeria. Lockley. Actually, my given name is Nigeria Murphy, but I'll get into that when I tell you how I chose this name. Um, I am New York City born and bred. Um, I am like, I, I am New York City. Like, I sweat concrete, I bleed asphalt. So I was always a poet. Um, I, my career in writing started in poetry. I've been writing since I was very young, since I was four years old, I wanted to be a writer. Um, and in maybe junior high school, I found a book in the library. I stole the book, I should say, because I never returned it. I think I still have it, actually. <laughs> what was the name of the book? Um, it was an anthology of women's poetry. And there were different, you know, subjects in there. But I happened to find a poem in there by June Jordan, All of That's All Right. Um, and it repeated the line that, I don't want or I don't need and it goes through a list of like all of these things that we have from day to day you know eggs breakfast all that I don't need any of that all I want is somebody to give me a seven day kiss and after I read that I said I'm gonna be a poet the pride and promise that's embedded in each new seed is in your name so are your parents failure each syllable folds upon each other like an origami crane with the hopes that someday you will fly too. Not so close to the sun that you burn your wings, but close enough that you bring back things to shift the shape of your family's estate. Your career and calling are embedded in your name. I wanted a name that would reflect me and, and you know, Nigeria, and then uh, M, I used to be a Murphy, so I wanted a last name that started with an M. So I did some combing and digging, and I found Nia, which means warrior. And so I was like, yes, I am a warrior. And I found Mora, which means star of the sea. And I was like, yes, when men look at me, they find their way home. <laughs> uh, that's for me. That's definitely my name. And I, you know, sort of guide people in, you know, the things that I say and do. So I was like, this is going to be my name. Love, longing, healing, and heartbreak, those are like the main things that I talk about. I kind of deal with what was, what is, and what I hope will be. Um, so that's kind of where I am centered, but also because I am aware of different things that go on, when there is an issue that really touches me, then I will write about it, or if there is a moment where I see there is someone having an issue and they don't have a voice to express or deal with that issue, then I feel like that's my opportunity to step in and use my, you know, gifting here. And what are some examples of some of the issues that you've experienced or you've noticed that you have written a poem about or poetry about? Um, so one, you know, We've had a lot of issues of police violence um, towards African American males. Um, and so one thing that really, you know, motivated me to write about that was one day I was walking through Central Park and I saw a section of American elms and they are fenced and there's a huge sign that reads like how they're endangered and how special they are and don't cross this line and we want to save them and we want to keep them and when I saw that I just thought like what if we protected black men that same way and I had to write about that because it was very like it's disheartening some days and how do you for me I believe very much in the police my father was a police officer um, and so I know the importance of the job that they do and I know that they're all not bad and so it's very heartbreaking for me to choose a space and where to stand as a black woman and see these atrocities happen and still say the cops are good and I have daughters and I want to teach them when they need help 
where to go and to call 911 and how to teach them that when they see these things and they're fearful also. There is a moment in which James Baldwin says like it is the duty of a writer of color to tell the stories of the people and speak to their pain and speak to their needs and their desires. Um, and so there are a lot of people already speaking to the voids or talking about the voids but there isn't a thing that says we can come out of this void or this is what it looks like on the other side of the void so you should work towards coming out of it. Like I hope that you you know receive confidence from a piece. I hope that you recognize like there's not anything wrong with you if you're struggling with certain issues. There are definitely pieces where I say this is my issue. This is what I'm going through. This is what I've been through. So if this is happening to you like there's nothing wrong with you per se. And I feel like writing is very much therapeutic and writing for healing like it's very important because there are just a lot of things that happen to us as people and human beings um, that we don't get to talk about and in this day and age where when something traumatic happens it's over and over and over again if you go on Instagram it's there if you go on Facebook it's there when you, you meet your friend they're like hey did you see you didn't see the video I'm gonna show you the video and you have to experience your trauma over and over again and if you have not had the opportunity to say I am traumatized by this something even more damaging happens but poetry becomes a space where you get to say oh yes that happened to me I can breathe and I can talk about this and here's somebody I can talk about it with who's not gonna say hey it's your fault oh you should have been here you should have been standing there you should have done this you should have done that like it's an open and a safe space. And you are a sonnet. 14 lines of stress, then we rest and go back to the beginning again. That is a heroic crown for you. You see, the last line always becomes the first line. And I wish I could remember the first line that you said to me, but all I know is it must have sounded like poetry. And I must confess that you've grown in your artistry because even your text messages convey a cadence that makes the chambers of my heart sing. You see, our love, like poetry, is just a theory.